Okay, so these problems can get a lot more complex, but as long as you remember the rules and try to work towards getting X all by itself, you'll be in good shape to solving these problems. So I'm just going to re rewrite this at the bottom. Um, X minus 3 over 4 uh, is equal to 7. Now, normally, we would like to get rid of the addition and subtraction first, but think of this as just one big number. All right, so there's actually a division operation that's happening here. So we're going to have to do that first. So x minus 3 divided by 4. What I'm going to do is I need to get rid of this um, at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 4. And then I multiply this side by 4. So now that's gone. This is just going to be equal to x minus 3 is equal to 28. Now, the reason why... If you look over here, we do 4 over 1 multiplied by x minus 3 in here, all right? So this is basically saying I have 4 x minus 3s over 4. So if I have 4, 4 of anything divided by 4, this is just going to be 1 and 1. So I'm just left with x minus 3. That's why I could do that. So this is just going to be x minus 3 is going to be equal to 28. So we're going to add 3 on this side and then add 3 on this side. So we get x is equal to 31. Now, what you should always do with these problems is, of course, just try to go back and plug in and see if it makes sense. So x is 31. So 31 minus 3 divided by 4 is going to be equal to 7. 31 minus 3 is 28. So 28 divided by 4 is equal to 7. And yes, that's true. 7 is equal to 7. So we know that we did that correct because we were able to check. Okay. Now over here, <clears throat> I can just go ahead and do what I would normally do. Get rid of the addition and subtraction. So minus 10 and then minus 10. Now I have negative 3 fifths of x is going to be equal to 1 minus 10 is equal to negative 9. Okay. Now, this is multiplication. I have to divide. So in order to divide a fraction, I have to multiply by its reciprocal. So 5 over 3 multiplied by negative 5 over 3. We get rid of that. So x is going to be equal to, I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to put a 1 here, and I'm just going to cross cancel. You can multiply through if you want and then simplify, but I'm just going to cross cancel. 3 could go into 3 one time. Uh, 3 could go into 9 3 times. So we have negative 3 times negative 5 is going to be equal to positive 15. And then we just have a 1 at the bottom. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug in, see if this makes sense. So negative 3 fifths times 15. All right, put that in parentheses. I'm just going to turn it into a fraction now. I'm going to have to do that later. So we have, <clears throat> I'm going to cross cancel this. 5 goes into 5 one time. 5 goes into 15 three times. So negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. So negative 9 plus 10 is equal to 1. Yeah, that's definitely true. 1 is equal to 1. So yeah, that is correct. Okay. So just notice we're still going to have to try to get x by itself in whatever we do. Now, let's try two harder ones. Now, this is the same as the first one. The only thing that's different here is that I added this here. Now, because I did that, I could go ahead and take care of this first. So minus 2, minus 2. We got x plus 5 over 2. What was remaining is equal to 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2. Okay. Now, I'm going to multiply this by 2. And I'm going to multiply this by 2. That gets rid of that. So I have x plus 5 is equal to 4. Now I'm just going to subtract 5 from each side. So x is equal to negative 1. All right. Now, let's see if that makes sense. Negative 1 plus 5 over 2 plus 2 equals 4. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4. All right. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. And there we go. Excellent. All right. So x is equal to negative 1. Now, this has a mix. There's no fractions here, but you can see we are using the distributive property. So I'm going to multiply 9 by g, and I'm going to multiply 9 by negative 98. So negative 35 
equals 9 times g is just 9g. They're not like terms, so I just have to put them next to each other. Now, 9 times 98 is 882. And then I just have the plus 1. So I'm going to combine this over here first. So negative 35 equals 9g. And that's going to be negative 881. Because I have to add that 1. Now, I'm going to add 881 on each side. Add 881. So we have 9g is going to be equal to negative 35 plus 881 is 846. I got to get g by itself. So divide by 9, divide by 9. So now I have g, looks like a 9, g is equal to 94 or 94 is equal to g. Now, we can go ahead and plug that back in. Negative 35 equals 9 times 94 minus 98 plus 1. So negative 35, we got 9. We can just do this in here. 94 minus 98 is going to be equal to negative 4. And then we have negative 35 is equal to negative 36. So that's 9 times negative 4 plus 1. Negative 35. Um, oh, that's a six. There you go. Is equal to negative thirty-five. Yeah, that's definitely true. All right, excellent. And that's it. So, feel free to come back to this video um, while you're working on the worksheet and working on the Excel. I've pretty much gone over all of the forms that you'll see. All right.